Uh, it was seven years ago that for ESPN, I wrote an, an article about this very topic. And um, I, on my kids, I have it sitting in my phone right now because I'm about to tweet it out again. I usually tweet it out like every year or two because especially right now with what's going on in the world, like mm -hmm. I see the same kids getting offers every day and these coaches haven't watched them play. Like they're like, 80% of the offers I see right now, th this mm -hmm. time in particular, are, are just not legitimate. And what it, what it speaks to is the fact that that kid's AAU coach has a relationship with that kid's college coach. It has nothing to do with, with you know, that college coach's evaluation of that kid. Uh, eight times out of 10 right now. So, um, so I'm getting ready to share that article again, because essentially what it was is it was, um, you know, because seven years ago, everybody was still counting offers. Uh, and, but what it was, is it was a series of, of situations where I tell stories about, um, there was one, it was one situation. One story was a big East head coach. I was standing there watching a game with them. Um, I think it was at, uh, I think it was at live in the AC. This is, this was, that was like a, a new event back then. And he was watching a kid mm -hmm. and he says to me, this kid's pretty good. Who is it? And I say, you know, he's whatever. And then I said, haven't you offered him? And his answer, and this is a big East head coach. He looked at me, he says, oh, hell, I don't know who the hell we offered, you know? And I'm just like, you know, and it wasn't, it wasn't like meaningful for them. There was another one where, um, you know, college coaches can't publicly comment on kids. Mm -hmm. So you have AAU coaches. Uh, there was an AAU coach back in the day who just used to blatantly lie, just, mm -hmm. just would tweet things like, you know, my player just got offered by this school. Well, that is like very literally incorrect. Um, and, and I would always, you know, I'd get texts from college coaches who'd see it on, you know, Twitter was around back then, who'd see it on Twitter and say, that's not true. We didn't offer that kid. Mm -hmm. But they can't say that publicly because they, you know, it, it was a, uh, you know, a violation for them to, to talk about um, prospective student athletes. So there was no, there was nobody to kind of hold that, you know, so that was another example of, of the whole offer thing. So, and we went down and there were a few different, a few other stories along those lines. But I, I think the bottom line is, is that an offer is not a tangible thing. You know, it's, it's not, um, it's sometimes it is, uh, but I, but I think that, you know, offers are, are fluid. Um, some are legitimate, some aren't. And I think that, you know, we, we talk way too much about it. Um, it's, it's not really what's, what's important. What's important is who wants you, who's recruiting you, where could you go right now? Um, and if a coach has never seen you play and he calls you up and says, I would like to, uh, you know, I'd like to offer you say, well, I'm ready to commit. Would you, would you, uh, you know, and see what they say then, you know, if they hit the brakes, you don't have an offer. You know right. I mean? We exactly. used to say on, on August 1st, after the July live period was over, I used to tell people, um, you know, if that coach didn't call you, you don't have an offer anymore, you know, cause that's no coach is going to call and say, uh, we're, we're taking your scholarship offer off the table. They're just going to stop calling. You know, that's right. So these, these, you know, a lot of people treat offers as these tangible things that you can collect and that, you know, they're like poker chips that never go away. Well, that's, that's, that's not how it works. Right. 